Hey, welcome back to another Racer X Roundtable. My name is Donnie Southers. I'm joined by Kellen Brower, Mitch Kendra, and Jason Wygant. And there is only one topic on the board today, and that is Jet Lawrence and a potential perfect season. We are now over the hump, seven rounds down, 14 and 0, heading into round eight at Washougal. Kellen, tell us why we don't like to talk about these things until a certain point into the season. Well, I mean, I, I use the baseball analogy of it is that we don't talk about a perfect game till we're past the fifth inning or into the sixth inning, if that's what we want to call it. Uh, I feel like we're into the sixth or maybe seventh inning of pro motocross at this point where we can say like, hey, this is this is real. Uh, in the first half of the season, you can say, you can come up with every reason why it won't happen. Now you're you're limiting your options, your opportunities where this could go wrong for him. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, some of the tracks coming up and how that might hinder him. But. You know, when you're at round two, you can easily say, yeah, there's there's got to be a tip over at some point. There's got to be a weird start. There's got to be something like that. But when there's only eight of those chances left, you're getting down to the nitty gritty of like, hey, wait a minute, this might be possible. So the one thing that we do have, though, is even if um, he's not going to be able to catch for laps led, we know that for sure because somebody is way, way in advance. But we do have... Everybody, you might have seen the record books going around. MX Reference showed that Jet has led 105 consecutive laps. He's on that streak right now. He led 97 earlier. And there's actually a gap because the records only go to 2004 for public consumption. But Mitch, you actually have some extra data for us. Where does Jet actually rank on laps led this season? Yeah, so we reached out to the guys here at the MA and did an awesome list on the laps led, uh, like you mentioned, talking about the streaks. So obviously James Stewart's perfect season, 2008, he has the most 221 is, you know, we've done 222 laps so far this year and just led 206 of them, although not all 206 in a row, but 221 in a row from James Stewart is just incredible. Um, so yeah, like we was able to dig into that research. So Jets uh, 95 or 97 lap streak to begin the season with the first three straight events and then the first uh, half moto at uh, high point, he had, that's the fifth longest streak in history, I believe. And then his 105 that he's currently on now uh, is the fourth longest streak in history. And again, comparing it to James Stewart's perfect season in 2008, uh, Ricky Carmichael's perfect season in 2004, and then Ken Roxon's pretty good uh, 2016 season. It wasn't perfect, but it was really close. So yeah, just some history there for, like I said, we dug into the list. If you guys want to read that, it's a really good article. Yeah, Stu has the record. Carmichael has two others that are longer than what Jet has right now. So Jet's current 105 in a row is the fourth highest ever. But we even did the math. We think there are barely enough laps left this year where if Jet led every single lap for the rest of the year, he would actually eclipse Stu's uh, mark. I think he could get to around 225 laps at minimum. And Stu has 221 if he led every single lap for the rest of the year. That's crazy. And that's something that could actually happen. Like, obviously, he's been very dominant. Chase does look like, though, he is returning to form a bit. And he's actually been pretty good here at this track. Right, Kellen? Yeah, Chase has definitely uh, done well in the past at Washougal. Uh, we saw, I mean, his amazing battles with Eli Tomac there last year. And I felt like that was a little bit of, like, a tipping point in the run for the championship where Sexton finally kind of broke him a little bit because Tomac was on a roll. Uh, so maybe it's another tipping point opportunity here for Chase because we've seen Chase really, really not happy these last two weeks after the motos, feeling like he's letting them get away. Like this this past weekend in particular, I think he felt like he let two opportunities to win the motos get away from him. Uh, and I don't know that he's necessarily motivated to stop the perfect season. I think he's just motivated to win again uh, because it's been so long and you hate getting second uh, more more so than you love winning sometimes, as Ricky normally puts it. So. Um, I think that this is an opportunity where Chase can finally build to that level that he was maybe at last year going into Washougal and finally take a bad track for Jet and turn it into a positive track for him and turn things around. And, and how good was that battle last year with Tomac and Sexton? <laughs> yeah, that was an old time. That was Eli throwing everything he had at a guy and <laughs> Sexton being able to hold him off. And you don't see that very often. Yeah. Someone overcoming. And then they took over. They tipped over in together, too, and then it was who could get their bike started first. That was awesome. Yeah, that was probably one of the most memorable, um, memorable, I mean, moments of the season, I think, was them trying to race to get it together. And then we, right before we jumped on the call, you actually were, were looking up that uh, this was not a great race for Jet last year. 
Well, there's been all this buzz about that because Jet has not won a moto at Washougal. It's only four motos that he's actually been in because uh, we missed it with the pandemic for a few years. And since it's come back, he did win an overall without winning a moto at this track. But I think it's that basic stat where he hasn't won a moto. Whereas Sexton has done so well, he's beaten Eli Tomac straight up for a moto win at this track on a 450. But I think Jet was saying it himself in the post-race press conference that he knows that this next track is really good for Chase. I feel like Washougal, and we'll talk about Unadilla in a second. I feel like Washougal, Unadilla, maybe Southwick in a way, they're feast or famine. Some guys really excel on those tracks. Some guys do not. It's Some guys love it. Some guys hate it, that kind of thing. And uh, these next two, Washougal and Unadilla, that's like a real challenge, I think. They're, they're tracks you can – some guys can excel and some guys can really struggle where I feel like if you go to Redbud or Millville or Bud's Creek or Ironman, it's pretty much everyone likes them. So I think even Jet knows this is a bit of a critical juncture, although that's all saying how much does he even care? You know, we're putting the the perfect season thing in the air. Is it going to crush him if he loses the moto? Does he even care? Is that even the goal? Maybe the goal is just to win the title anyway. Well, that's what I was going to bring up too. Four point lead, right? Yeah. I mean, like if we see this Titanic Sexton versus Tomac level battle that we had last year, at what point does Jet just say like, I'm good? The, the championship bonus is going to cash much nicer than going perfect this year. Uh, is he this motivated to go perfect? I don't, I don't think so. Like, I think that in his mind, he's taking it week by week and wants to win every moto he can. But I, I think if you have Sexton all over him for two motos and Sexton finally passes him, that he's not going to blow him off the track to get it back. I think he's, in my opinion, looks like he's more willing and, and interested in winning this championship than he is about going perfect this year. Yeah, and David Villeman and James Stewart were on the Pulp Show on Monday, and Villeman said he was like, the difference was young James wanted to win every race by a minute, forever. And he was like, and Jet, even at 19, is not like that. He has not done that. It always feels like he's riding at 90%. Guy catches up. He might, you know, push for a lap or two. But we haven't seen anybody stick with him for beyond a lap or two. Does he just say, ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. And as much as I think he would want a perfect season and it would suck to not have that for history, I think that would be a better testament to Jet's character, maybe, if he did just say, I don't even care about a perfect season. Like, what would that do to your, I don't know, to your aura to be 19 and be, you know, dominating and literally just be like, eh, whatever. I don't care. What's a perfect season? It's only 22 rounds this year anyway. Yeah, James is pretty funny. He said right off the bat, I think it was round three or something like that, where he said, hey, I know one thing, he can't go 24-0. I think, I think Carmichael and Stewart were kind of chasing each other a little bit. So Carmichael has the first perfect season. That was not planned. No one knew that was possible. That he does it. He was so competitive in that era. He gets beat twice in 2003, but he was on a two-stroke, and Kevin Windham was on a four-stroke. So I think he was so mad about that that he's like, okay, the only way to prove that it was just the bike is I'm going to have to get a four stroke of my own the next year. And I'm going to have to go perfect again, just so everybody knows that I still can't be beat. And then I also feel like James is like, well, that's the standard. Now, if I'm going to be a match in history to RC, I'm going to have to have a perfect season of my own. So I think I can see reasons why those guys really wanted it. If we got down to the last race and jet still undefeated. Sure. But I don't, I put it this way. If he's behind Sexton with like four laps to go on a slippery track like Washougal and those shadows and all that, I don't know if you're going to see him risk it. I could see him being like, you know what? Perfect season was never the goal. I'm going to lose three points in this moto to a guy who missed three rounds. Who cares? Hey, Weege, I was going to say, I think we kind of talked about this before, but explain what it was like during, you know, covering the sport during those perfect seasons from Stu and RC versus now with social media and Jet and just explain the differences. Like, what was it like back then? Were they going to the track ex- you know, where people expect him like, oh, we're just going to settle for a second or just, you know, talk us through that differences. Dude, it's this hilarious thing that I talk about in the weed show every week where people say the thing that, you know, a sport needs most is competition and parity. And that's what makes it grow. But at the same time, singular dominance. I've literally heard this sentence, like with a comma in between what the sport needs to really grow is great competition. And Jeremy McGrath's dominance is what made the sport grow. <laughs> what? So I honestly feel like from a big picture perspective, these aren't dramatic motos. Stu was very rarely on the rope. Same thing with RC. It's not like we got to the point where it was, oh my gosh, he barely got it done. These are not game seven playoff moments where they had to pull off a pass in the last lap. We never got to that point. Jet might not. So it's not compelling in that sense, but I actually do think 
it brings like a big story to the picture. So as boring as it is like individually, I think if we get to that point, it might actually be more exciting to have a perfect season, even though it's the exact opposite of parody. I think that's the way it felt back then. It was boring, but everybody still thought it was cool because you knew you were seeing something special. Yeah, it's unique because there's other sports, ball, you know, stick and ball sports, like the big feats everybody can celebrate together. You know, like you don't automatically lose because another guy's hitting 70 home runs. You can still be like, oh yeah, you can root for that guy and your guys. But yeah, in racing, it's kind of different. It's if they're having it, you're not. And that really is very unique, I think, to motorsports. Well, Kellen, that's the position Sexton's in. And to bring it back to baseball, right? The no hitter, the team that gets no hit hates it. They're embarrassed, right? (laughs) Yeah, and I think Chase is, is at this point, we think he's, going to ktm right so he's leaving honda he's leaving the the system that he's basically built into this entire time and and more or less handing the keys over to jet but it's being ripped from him in a sense too because jet's obviously dominating these motos and kind of taking it from him i think this is more like sour grapes at this point for chase to be like i just wanted a supercross title and i feel like no one even realizes that or no one's even talking about it because we're already on to the next thing and the next phenom and all this stuff like that. So uh, motivation wise, I think it's clear that he doesn't want this to happen. Like he at some point wants to get back to winning, even if it's a moto or two or just getting in there again to show that like my speed is capable of running with this guy for the next however long they're going to race each other. Because if you give him this leg up now, who knows how that's going to turn into three or four years down the road when the, all that momentum is built up and he's no longer a rookie. Like you got to kind of stop the the flooding before it bursts as, as much as it has already. And I think that rookie thing is something that obviously we're all talking perfect season, but it's weird that Jet is so good and has been so dominant that it doesn't even seem that ridiculous that he's doing it as a teenage rookie. It really somehow somehow doesn't even, you don't even think of that, you're just moving on. But uh, David Villeman brought up, he was like, you know, Ricky and James were doing this in their mid-20s at their peaks. Jet's way younger than that. Like, we don't even know, what does what does 25-year-old Jet look like? Like, what how how different could that be? Um, well, do, doing a little prediction, looking ahead, uh, obviously the stats you dug up, the three people that have led more consecutive lap streaks ahead of them, all of those guys went on to have perfect seasons and many of the guys behind them even went on to have perfect seasons. So first question, hold on, th- I got one stat to match up to that. Uh, okay. Fowler, the statistician says the current moto win streak right now, is it 14? Is it 14 that he's on right now? Yep. Yes. Yep. That is the longest streak of moto wins that has not been part of a perfect season. The only streak <laughs> longer were part of perfect season. So that's the direction this is headed. No one's ever won this many motos and not ended up perfect by the end of the year. So if he ends up losing one, this would be the one that got away. This would be the sort of kind of no hitter getting broken up in the ninth kind of thing. Yeah, but he still gets to be champ at the end of the year. So like I, said, I don't know <laughs> if it's going to bother him. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Like if he, if he goes to uh, 21 and one, like is anybody really going to be like oh wow he's terrible he didn't get it done he didn't finish like it's still pretty darn impressive yeah the the bummer is that regardless if he gets it or not everybody is going to have the same reaction yeah well chase wasn't 100 percent, and eli wasn't there like rather he wins it or not it's the exact same i'm going to say grandis isn't quite at his championship level either yeah yeah i'm not going to say asterisk because that's a little strong but that's kind of what people people would put they would put that attached to it uh let's go back to um was it 2008 cody cooper uh was very 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 close to ending james's perfect streak we're obviously all kind of putting uh that crown on chase to be the spoiler if not chase if somebody else gets it done who is a maybe kind of wild card that you think could the stars align and somebody take down Jet before the end of the year. I'll say, well, if we're thinking Unadilla, maybe because we might see Ken Roxon returning. He's gone one one there in 2019, was two seconds faster in qualifying, and I'm pretty sure he did the same feat in 21. Obviously, they missed the race there in 2020 with COVID, but two years of going back to back one one, two seconds faster. Like, and Kenny's just really good in this technical. You know, he doesn't ride high RPMs. He just cruises around that track it looks like he's not even going fast but somehow he's just pulling away from everybody and i think that's one of those where you know sometimes there's carnage because that's a right hand first turn so maybe that comes into play too if jet would go down i don't know if 
if Roxon's at Unadilla, this could get interesting. Just, I mean, he was the only guy to lead laps so far at High Point, not named Jet. So maybe Unadilla is, if it's not this weekend, maybe it is Unadilla. I don't know. If yeah, not, I'd say for, go I was going to say, I'd say for me, it, it's Chaser Kenny. Like, I don't see how you could slice it any other way that anybody else is going to get into it. These, those guys are beating Dylan and Adam and uh, Plessinger by 45 seconds, sometimes a minute in these motos. They have to take massive leaps to get there. Like, you could, you could maybe say AC, if he gets to a whole moto without the nerve issue, could have the speed, maybe. But does he have the endurance then? We haven't even seen how long he could last without the nerve issue. I don't know. I don't know how you slice it any other way than Chase is, is the closest and maybe Kenny. Weege, if we get through this weekend and we get through Unadilla, is that pretty much it? Are these the last two big hurdles? Yeah, I think at that point we can talk about it, discuss it all you want. It would be almost impossible at this point for Jet to not be truly chasing it because he's going to be borderline, maybe even able to wrap the title up around Unadilla time. <laughs> We had Carmichael on the TV show this weekend, and he asked Johnny O'Mara about, about the perfect season. He's like, RC, we don't even talk about that. We just talk about the title. So RC's theory is, until the title's wrapped up, that's not the focus. But if it's down to only four motos to go, and he's already the champ, then at that point we might see, okay, this is an actual goal I'm trying to chase. And I, to the point we were making earlier, we don't know how much of a risk he's willing to take to get this. But if we got down to those last two, Maybe then you're like, well, I got nothing to lose. I'm not going to blow the title anyway, so let's go for it. Well, too, and thinking big picture this year, there's super motocross. So is he really going to force the issue again if the title's wrapped up? Is he going to force the issue? And we haven't seen him really since he broke his collarbone a couple of years ago have a crash where he was sidelined. So is he going to risk super motocross world championship to get a perfect season and then risk, you know, his 2024 campaign? It's, you know, he's probably not going to, he's still young, but he's probably, have, has enough common sense to realize bigger picture. Hey, be smart about it. That's a great Do point. You think those last two tracks though, are a little bit more, you can go for it kind of tracks where our Shugle and Unadilla are the type where you have to go the speed you're going. And if you try to find, and again, this is if he's put in a bad spot where he's got to make up time late in the race because of a bad start or a tip over. Those are the kind of tracks where, as James says, you got to make a business decision. Do you <laughs> want to try to go 5% faster? I think at Unadilla and Washougal, it's riskier than Buds and Ironman, where you could probably just find it if you need it. Well, and I think, too, because one of the things that everybody always says, Washougal, it's like in the shadows. You have this, you're dealing with the shadows, but there too, some of those back and forth. You're kind of just inside, inside. There's no going outside of the good line to make a pass. Like it's, I mean, it's doable if you're pushing the limits, but then again, like you said, you're getting outside of the main line, you're pushing the boundaries. So, yeah. So to wrap up on that, let's make predictions. Kellen, does he get it done? Does he go 22 at this point? I'm going to say no. I say Chase wins the second moto at Washougal this weekend. I think Jet will win the first. And then I think because of that and because of the weight lift off the shoulders and because of the title probably being wrapped up at Unadilla, Jet will lose like another moto or two down the stretch just because he's not pushing as hard championships already wrapped up etc kind of stuff so i would say he, my most likely prediction is he goes like 19 and 3 maybe 20 and 2 weege what do you got yeah i'm kind of similar to that i think because he's not chasing this goal and for sex that it would mean everything to end it and we've got some risky tracks that are really good for guys coming up um i don't think he's going to be bad by any means but i just don't know if he's going to be going for it enough uh yeah i'm gonna say 20, 21 and one. That's what I'll go with. One moto he's going to say just isn't worth it. Mitch, what about you? I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I think these guys made good points. Like, and again, this isn't, we're not saying Jet isn't capable of doing this because we obviously have seen what he's done so far. It's not, we're not rooting against him, but I just think with Sexton coming back from his injury and getting back up to speed, I think he'll be a factor. And then again, if Kenny comes into play, a Unadilla, maybe Buds or another round. I just think those guys, like I said, they're not not that they want to risk it all and crash, but those guys will be a little bit more motivated to win uh, and just kind of dethrone Jet a little bit. So I don't know. I think maybe three motos slip away too. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be any higher than that, honestly, but you never know. I like, Honey, where, you, 
I like where you guys are at, but I'm I'm going I'm going the other side. I'm going data. Oh. I mean, I'm going data. Fourteen in a row. How? Why not eight more? I mean, <laughs> it's uh, generational. Yeah, generational. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like, can he do eight more? I mean, that's the big deal. You've already done fourteen incredible starts. Can you do eight more? But at this point, I don't really have enough to say no. Um, but if he does lose one, I actually think it's Kenny. I don't know why. It just feels like the most rocks and thing to do to take the summer <laughs> off and show up and just be the only one to be able to compete at all. And then he just goes back. He just vanishes the end. He just, you know, dissipates. And we see him in spring. I mean, yeah. it's looking crazy. I had forgotten that the only person, the only he'd have led every lap this year if it wasn't for the guy who doesn't even race the series full time. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, on an unfamiliar I mean, bike with no testing. Right. Yeah. Like right. jet starts have been so good, but like the the thing that's helping him out so much is there's six factory bikes going to the first corner. They're all six up front every time. Like Jet's worst start possibility is a sixth place. Like how do hey, you, six how do you knock that easy. down? Yeah. Yeah, six and master pool. Right. And Jet <laughs> has so much speed. Like I think he can start seventh and get to second on the end of the first lap. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. time, every time he has been second or third, and I'm like, oh, you know, Chase got a good start. Two turns and it's over. And I'm like, wow, okay, <laughs> never mind. I got really excited there it for about really twelve seconds. Impressive. Like you said, the moves he did at Southwick, same thing. Second start and then right at that first hill, and then he did it over this weekend too. Like getting yeah. him right and then you know, clutch time, making those moves right away, and then just running away. See you guys. It's kind of scary. All right, boys. Well, thanks for joining me for another roundtable. Um, as Mitch said earlier, be sure to read Weege's article on racerxonline.com. Uh, the list, if you want to know more about the lap sled. But uh, Kellen, Mitch, Weege, thanks for joining me. And thank you for joining, watching at home. Be sure to visit racerxonline.com for all your motocross and supercross news.